This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Transportation Public Works Committee. Uh, I'm Councilman Reich. I chair the committee and I'm joined by Councilman Ruziang and Councilman Palmasano. Uh, we are not a, a quorum of the committee and therefore we can take no action on the items of the agenda today. However, because of prior notice uh, about several public hearings was given, uh, we will proceed with accepting public testimony from everyone present who came to speak regarding one of our four public hearing items. Staff will be able to respond to questions raised by the public, but the committee will take no action. This also means the committee cannot take action on any other items on the agenda. Therefore, we plan to adjourn this meeting to next Wednesday, November 4th, starting at 9 a.m., at which time we will take action on all items of the agenda. Committee members uh, not present today will review the video to today's meeting prior to the adjourned meeting, so they will have heard all testimony taken today and be prepared to act on all items on November 4th. The first item is the sidewalk repair and construction assessments. Uh, Mr. Kaki, who will be presenting this item? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mike Kennedy, our Director of Transportation Maintenance Repair, will start the presentation and introduce others. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. <clears throat> Again, Mike Kennedy, I'm the Director of Transportation Maintenance and Repair for Minneapolis Public Works. We're here for the public hearing for our uh, sidewalk repair and construction and condemnation program. Uh, public Works completed its annual condemnation and repair of public sidewalks in 2014. Property owners had the option of contracting, contracting for the repairs themselves or allowing the city to complete the work and be billed or assessed for the work. For those choosing the latter, this action is to, to proceed with the process for collecting those, those assessments. An assessment letter was sent to property owners, which included advising them to contact Public Works Sidewalk Inspections in writing if they had an issue with their assessment. Sidewalk Inspections then often contacted the property owner to discuss their concerns regarding the work and pending assessments. If a resolution could not be worked out, the property owner was advised that the next step would be to appear before an administrative hearing officer. The assessments proposed in this action include the results of all discussions with property owners and determinations made by the hearing officer. The properties on the list to be assessed dated October 13, 2015 as on file with the city's engineering Engineers Special Assessment Office had sidewalk repair and construction work done during 2014 by the city's sidewalk contractor. The amount to be assessed as special assessment principal is the cost of the work plus the sidewalk overhead charge. The sidewalk overhead charge is 10% of the cost of the work with a cap of $50. The total principal amount of the proposed assessments on the list of properties to be assessed, less prepayments received and adjustments by the administrative hearing officer, is $944,388.21. Assessments of more than $1,500 would be collected over 10 years, beginning on the 2016 real estate taxes with interest. Assessments of more than uh, more than 150 and up to 1,500 would be collected over five years, <clears throat> with the exception of property located at 3000 Morgan Avenue in the amount of $2,492.73 shall be collected over five years as conveyed through the council member's office for Ward 4. The interest rate will be 3.5% for five-year terms and 4.2% for 10-year terms. The assessments of $150 or less will be collected in their entirety on the 2016 tax statements. So the amount of assessments proposed to be collected over one, five, and 10 years are $10,232.42 for a year, five years is $621,213.54, and over 10 years is $312,942.25. Information was provided to the property owner's taxpayers as to how persons may prepay assessments in full without interest charges if they so choose. The Minneapolis City Council has passed resolutions whereby a deferment of special assessments may be obtained by showing hardship for any homestead property or by a person of 65 years of age or older or retired by virtue of a permanent and total disability. Notice uh, translations um, were included with each mailing to accommodate non-English speaking residents and provide them with a phone number for a translator should they call for more information. So therefore our recommendation today is to uh, pass a resolution to adopt the assessments in the total amount of $944,388.21, levy the assessments, adopt the assessment roll, and direct the city clerk to transmit certified copies of the assessment roll to the Hennepin County Auditor. That concludes my presentation. We'll, we have uh, staff from the Sidewalk Inspections Group uh, to answer questions as well as uh, their assessment office to answer questions if that's needed. <clears throat> Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. Any questions for the presentation? Councilman Riang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a minor correction here. Um, 3000 Morgan Avenue North is actually in Ward 5. Um, so just a minor thing. 
Um, outside of that, just wanted to clarify. So with regards to this hearing, I mean, if people have issues with their sidewalks, it's not for that. Is that correct? I'm, uh, Mr. Chair, Councilman Young, I'm sorry to, I didn't answer the. Or, uh, sorry about the the Ward Four versus Ward Five. We'll get that's that correct. Okay. I mean, it's, it's close enough. To I, the I board read it and I thought that's not right. But. Yeah. No, and I'm no sorry. The second question. You know, just with regards to this hearing today, I mean, are we here uh, with regards to, um, let's say, people who have complaints about their sidewalk conditions, or are we here for the assessments, or is it both, or is it everything? Um, uh, Mr. Chair and Councilman Yang. It's a little bit of everything. Mostly it's to hear persons' um, testimony about their concerns about what they were assessed for and the work and uh, for the committee to make recommendations or adjustments to that, if so, decided. Okay, thank you. And any further questions for the presentation? Seeing none, I will open the public hearing uh, and take a testimony uh, in order of those who signed up. I think we can sign up with the clerk here. Uh, starting with, um, John D. Um, Sipluski. Could I defer and let him go first? Certainly. He's got some pictures that I want you to see. Understood. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Yeah, Stephen Meldahl. My uh, shop address is 1223 26th Avenue North in Minneapolis. And uh, good morning, uh, uh, Chairman and fellow council members. Um, I've included a packet which um, uh, it, I've tried to keep it pretty brief. It kind of highlights everything that kind of went on with uh, uh, the replacement of certain sidewalks in front of a, a number of my uh, properties in North Minneapolis. Um, in the packet, you'll notice that uh, back in June of 2014, I did send a notice once we had, I'd been notified that they wanted to replace certain parts of sidewalks in front of certain of my rental properties. And um, so I sent uh, a letter, um, which is in your packet, and I've also included the emails. I believe there's maybe two or three pages of emails of back and forth. And and basically my, the problem I had was that um, I left uh, a number of voicemail messages uh, with, um, I believe it was either Mr. Glenn or Mr. Hannon, to be honest with you, I don't remember. but. It had to do with, I'd like to meet your inspector out there. First off, many of these sidewalks just have small spider cracks in them. There's no lip protruding. There's no raising of one level of the uh, sidewalk next to the other level. And uh, they would never return my calls. I finally, and this is last late last summer, I did get, in 2014, uh, Mr. Glenn left a message that they were going to reduce the number of sections on a number of the properties, but uh, that they were going to go forward with the rest. Uh, the reason I wanted to meet with them is that I've been in the construction business for 44 years now. Um, one of my workers, Bill Harvey, who's been with me for over 20 years, used to work in with concrete, and he also worked with a large stucco company. Um, We've created our own polymer um, additive that we buy. I believe he buys either from Brock Bright, Brock White, or Nanotech. And then we add, we have our own vinyl patch with sand. And he's got the mix. Let's put it that way. I don't. And um, it holds up. In other words, you have these little spider cracks. You can use our product that we use, the sidewalks other than you can see where we did it, hold up just fine. In fact, in my own house, I have a, a concrete driveway. I've got a lip in the front part of my driveway that literally is about a one inch lip that I did eight years ago when Bill came to me saying, I can mix something up that believe me will hold. And it's held for eight years and we drive on it. And that's with a one inch lip. It hasn't settled anymore. Um, so the issue I had was the fact that they went ahead and did this work and in those, in that packet, you'll see the pictures show that really these sidewalks, there's really nothing wrong. And <clears throat> I've also included in that packet um, a, literally pictures, I walked around City Hall here. And I've been complaining about the sidewalks here um, for a number of years. And in that packet, you'll see that I've, uh, there is somebody else that actually happened to complain before me this year. 
and that they're supposed to be addressed. But if you look at those pictures in there of the sidewalks around City Hall, none of our sidewalks, as far as my sidewalks that were done in North Minneapolis, are near as bad as the sidewalks right outside City Hall here. Now, we don't have dignitaries from other countries and other cities coming to North Minneapolis very often anyways. And the fact that they don't do the sidewalks here, um, and I'm sure if there's lawyers on the panel, which I believe there are, I've got a city memo from years ago that says that when you have unequal enforcement, this is considered an arbitrary and capricious uh, decision by the city to do things unequally, especially when they don't even enforce it on themselves. And so um, there's legal ramifications for doing that. I don't want to take up much more time, but if you just look at the packet, everything's pretty much explained in there. And uh, But again, they're doing work that doesn't need to be done, and also they won't let me show them how we can rectify 95% of these small cracks, and they hold up. It's literally, and it has held up this way, that when you break a piece of steel and you melt or, and you weld it back together, the weld is stronger than the actual piece of steel was in the first place. And literally with the polymer additive and with the process that Bill uses, these sidewalks would hold up better and be just fine. So it, it, if it was South Minneapolis, I don't think I'd have as big a problem, but these values in North Minneapolis aren't, aren't very high. So when you're spending that kind of money that we always would rather put into our properties um, and spending it on sidewalks, uh, I just think it's, it's, uh, it's a little overboard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we can now proceed with uh, uh, John. I have name and address for the record. Okay. You have my sheet of paper in front of you. And I'm working on bronchitis, and I'm at a disadvantage. I'm a night man. I don't get to bed till 2 o'clock in the morning since my wife died on me a few years back. And so I tell people you can't hold me responsible for human action till at least noon. <laughs> so uh, pardon me as I stumble around here, and I can no longer at my age speak as fast as I can't even hear the, the speed that the rest of you talk. But I'm here first and foremost, the same as Steve, protesting the fact that they're doing sidewalks where they don't need to be done. At the hearing before with Mr. Bronstead, uh, there was an old crippled lady too that said, the pieces that they did were just done two, three years ago. Now, I'm the only one in North Minneapolis that has the entire corner. I'm on the corner. 40 feet in front, 125 on the side. And I'm the only one where they did the entire thing. Now, when I get to court and put Mr. Glenn under oath and... uh he okayed these. I, I've kept my sidewalks up with vinyl cement, which if you travel I-94 up to 694, they used to, 10 years ago, fix the ruts with vinyl cement. Those things are still holding, whereas now they've been the last 10 years putting in blacktop, which gives you a thump every time you go over it and so forth. Now, the city has used vinyl cement on uh, the summer with the nice ride bikes that they gave us, these orange things, just for North Minneapolis. I did 64 <laughs> bike rides this summer in different places, mostly around North Minneapolis. I no longer have, uh, 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 I have an Obama phone, but I'm a, uh, my wife and I chose to live in the inner city with among the poor and as poor and as listed on one of the pages here, my total uh, uh, Social Security, which is my only income since I'm a bad Catholic priest, I did the unpardonable sin of marriage. Could have gotten away with adultery, fornication, and homosexuality, but uh, so I don't get a pension. I live on $306 a month. 
the assessment for this concrete thing is three thousand three hundred and five dollars and sixty three cents, which is more than my yearly income. But I'm here not just talking for myself. I've got neighbors, and uh, the thing about Jim Glenn, he okayed my my uh, thing, uh, but then uh, Bauer changed the rule. Well, we can't use vinyl cement. And he lied right in front of me at the last hearing when he said, oh, he had some uneven. I had no uneven things, and I have the testimony of two experts. One was the supervisor of the project, this, uh, and, uh, oh, I, I'm terrible on names here, uh, Andy uh, Ghent. He agreed with me. Your sidewalks don't need to be changed. So as I pointed out in the one letter here, I threatened the guys as I got to know them. I led two of them to the Lord, actually. And and I said, I'm, I'm going to be out here with my hose. You're not tearing, tearing out my sidewalks. And another guy, Val Veras, is a cement man that lives about four blocks away from me. He came over and looked, and he took pictures but he's so busy and stuff, I can't get him to come to the, this thing, and he, he, he wouldn't get the pictures made. That's why I'm glad Steve has some pictures, because in my bike riding, I can point out umpteen places where, like by the Capri Theater, there's at least eight squares that are just broken up. You can't ride a bike over them, but they're in front of a empty lot with the community used to use as a garden. They didn't use it this summer. So there's no uh, buddy to suck the money out of. And see, that's what I'm speaking of here. And just last night on, I watched Bernie Sanders on with Charlie Rose. And uh, he, one of his statements was that, yeah, the black man goes to jail for making a wrong left turn, but the Wall Street people and the others that are uh, in government that are uh, are getting away with cliche murder, you know, nothing. And <laughs> then I also got on an email, Senator Tom Colburn uh, said that with the billions uh, of stupidity, duplication, waste, and fraud in the, in the government, that was one phrase that I was able to uh, pick up and sir if we could keep the scope of your testimony to the sidewalk assessment pardon if you could keep the scope of your testimony to the sidewalk assessment i i know there's a lot yeah, of great well, more okay, interesting this global is, issues this is what i'm saying i believe there's a conspiracy going on uh, to squeeze money out of homeowners and landlords and so forth which gets down to the renter too in order to have as i have listed on uh, the one page here uh even the Twins ballpark now. We're going to another millions of dollars of renewal. And look at all the taxpayer money. We got a 1.3 billion dollar uh, surplus here in this the state. I don't know what it is with the city, but if you look at your phone bill, you get a city tax and a city fee on your phone bill, also on your utility bill, sir. I think we got the main point of your uh, issue with the sidewalk assessment, uh, both in its applicability and the specific condition of your own and maybe some past conversations with staff, which all will be addressed by our staff once we've concluded with testimony. Uh, but we can't well, really uh, answer let me or address finish, your issues. finish one point here because uh, uh, I had invited Mr. Yang to come and see my sidewalk before it was torn up. And he said he would if I had 10 to 20 people there. And I, so I called the block club, but he called an hour before the meeting and said he couldn't come. He'd send his secretary. And uh, she called the next day and said she couldn't come. She didn't know anything about sidewalks. So that next Saturday, I was in the park with the uh, memorial of the dead kid that I killed across the street from me. And I bumped into uh, Belong. And uh, so I asked him about this thing of assessing us. Why don't we assess the homeowners the same as we do in their street repair? We all pay for 40 feet. And he says, well, that's the way it is. Well, I showed him my, my uh, bill or projected bill, 3,800, 
And I said, no, it isn't. His response was, if you remember, well, if you live on a corner lot, you should have to pay for the whole thing. My response was, are you kidding? People on the corner lot, we don't use those public sidewalks except to shovel them, take care of the boulevard. And the worst part, I live on the route from North High School. I'm out there every day picking up garbage. So, and, uh, so we'll respond. Thank you. I think we'll respond to that, that issue in terms of how we assess uh, both in terms of the layout of your lot and in general. Well, my appeal is, is to cancel my bill entirely and these other people that are listed here, too. I, uh, one lady three doors away lost her job at uh, Walmart, and she had a little chip in her sidewalk about that big. I filled it with vinyl cement when Jim came and, uh, no, that's got to be changed. We don't accept vinyl. And, but he did say that the one that was uh, broken and sunk she wouldn't have to pay for that. Well, what happened? They put in six blocks on her mm -hmm. that didn't need to be done. Okay. And uh, sir, the people that are leaving the city. Sir, in fairness to other people who want to testify, I think we've got your points and we will address them uh, when we conclude testimony. Well, study this over and uh, I don't have, I don't, I'm too old. To, I don't want to fight it in court, but I have a daughter that's a lawyer's father-in-law and is in the, and uh, his twin brother and my son-in-law are all lawyers and they love to do class acts and suits. And I can tell you, I could get the testimony of every person that lives on the corner to go with this. But the least you can do is that uh, change the way of assessing and allow us to fix our tiny cracks with vinyl cement. Staff will address that. Thank you. Um, next in line, we have uh, Leslie uh, Skuramizo. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, it is Leslie Skuramuzo, 4125 17th Avenue South, Minneapolis. Um, and I'm just... Oh, Snow and Ice? You're here to talk about Snow and Ice. Yes. Oh, oh, is that what I, I'm so sorry. sorry. That's is that okay. what the question was? <laughs> yes. Sorry. So we'll take that uh, testimony when we open that public hearing. Okay. So we shall be okay. soon, uh, is my intent. Um, is there anyone else to speak to this issue before us? Um, see none, I will close the public hearing and staff could perhaps address some of the um, issues raised by testimony, particularly in terms of the applicability of our policy and, um, and how we feel that our citywide policy is our consistency. Uh, in terms of the uh, capricious accusation. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, <clears throat> I'd just like to start off by saying for both of the folks that testified here, we followed, we did our duty to um, go out and inspect the sidewalks, used the standard criteria that we use uh, that's consistent everywhere we go, <clears throat> made the corrections. In fact, we did... Um, <clears throat> reduce some of them. Um, in fact, with Father D's um, corner lot, we did, we were able to reduce his um, charges by putting in a new SI at the city cost and things like that and, and reduced it. <clears throat> All the repairs that he had made out there and both of them had made, we, we view as temporary uh, and used our tipper, typical things. Uh, Father D is um, uh, eligible for deferment if he so chooses. And so as far as the applicability of our standards, um, the city charter holds that the property owners are responsible for their sidewalks and they essentially own the sidewalks, whether it's 10 feet or 110 feet, and they're responsible for those. And each individual property um, is responsible for what's in front of their home. Um, we don't have a uniform type of assessment policy or anything else. This is the, the, the policy that we um, have in place for um, ordering the work done and getting the work done uh, in the city. And uh, that's a, another policy question if the council would so choose to discuss different ways to do that. But this is what we have today. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Council Maria? Mr. Chair, um, uh, Mr. Kennedy, can, can you just tell us um, briefly, I mean, in terms of sidewalks, they have a schedule just like roads, right? I mean, every so years we go to different parts of the town and fix up the sidewalks. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, Councilman Yang, that's correct. Okay. What's what's the number of years in between? 
um, customer rating. <clears throat> um, it's roughly about a dozen years. Um, it depends on where we are. <clears throat> um, by we have the city has taken on the um, responsibility of inspecting the, the sidewalks as they're in the public right of way, and we want to ensure safe passage. It's a bit arbitrary what we decide and um, uh, what that cycle is. This is what we've been using for a number of years, and so we do try to get around the city on about a 12-year cycle, 10 to 15. It just depends on how things are going. And Mr. Kennedy, um, let me ask you this. Um, our schedule is our schedule, though, right? I mean, in, in the sense that, you know, council members are not, um, they don't have absolute authority to say public works, you cannot show up in Ward 5 to do the sidewalks. Uh, not this year, not any year. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, Councilman Brang, that is correct. Um, this is the, 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 this is a staff decision and how we cycle through the, uh, the program. Can, can you repeat that again? Uh, th this is the this is a staff decision on how we cycle through the program. Okay. It is a discretionary uh, for the city, but we're we're doing our duty to to try to get through the city as best we can in an efficient way, and it's been working for a number of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. and Mr. Chair, um, I, I have some more comments, but I, I wanted staff to finish answering mm -hmm. the questions if they do have anything like that, or if anybody else else has any questions. But I will come back. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, any further questions uh, for staff or comments? Um, see none. Then I suppose Mr. Yang, you can, or Councilmember Yang, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's I, I don't think it's unusual in this end situation that uh, I was one of the folks that got assessed as well. Uh, my sidewalks um, got uh, done, and um, you know I have a corner lot, and uh, you know my assessments were maybe a little bit less than um, the gentleman who came up to speak, uh, you know, but my assessments are a little bit over $2,000. And, um, you know, uh, the gentleman that came up to speak, Mr. Chair, I, I want to say, I mean, for myself, you know, our office uh, got several phone calls from him. And, you know, I personally went over to his place and actually looked at his sidewalks. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert. I mean, I certainly don't have the sort of expertise that our staff has with regards to looking at the sidewalks and um, assessing whether they needed a repair or not. But I mean, I, I saw, you know, the sidewalks and I mean, they didn't look very good about that. Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, I want to point out a few things. I mean, with regards to the sidewalks, they're on a schedule. And, you know, as Mr. Kennedy pointed out, uh, you know, certainly council members, uh, don't have any sort of absolute authority to tell public works not to show up or to, you know, go away or those sorts of things. I mean, you know, and I think for good reason, because our schedule is our schedule and we want to do this so that it's uniform all across the city. And, you know, the times in which we hit you know, a certain ward and the sidewalks are still good. I mean, you know, folks don't get to pay for that. But I mean, if we miss, you know, a ward, I mean, sometimes, you know, they could go for uh, decades without um, sidewalk repairs. And, you know, that's problematic for folks who need access to sidewalks. And so, I mean, I, I think, you know, the way that we've adopted, you know, a schedule, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, with regards to an earlier point about how uh, this, the city is engaging in arbitrary and capricious um, actions, you know, I, I have to point out that, you know, I mean, maybe this analogy of, you know, sidewalks up on the north side versus sidewalks at City Hall isn't that fair a comparison. I mean, I think the right comparison is to talk about city-owned lots on the north side. The Public Works folks actually went out and fixed those city-owned lots as well, and it was on our own dime. And so I think it's it's important to point that out because, I mean, I think if you're uh, comparing apples to apples, I mean, that's a fair comparison. Um, you know, for myself, um, I, I want to thank staff for working so hard on this. Uh, Dan Bauer and his staff. I mean, I, I, I kid you not. Like we were on them. Like I mean, you wouldn't believe. I mean, pretty much almost every day throughout the process, complaining about everything and anything from um, our constituents. And I mean, I, I think Dan can attest to that. That you know, I mean, there were a lot of issues with regards to the contractor. We tried to fix those things. There were a lot of issues with constituents wanting people to go out there. We, you know, worked on that. I mean, there was a constituent who, um, you know, who had damage because of Boulevard trees. You know, we had staff uh, take a look at that. I mean, we went on Google Maps. I mean, and they, I mean, staff actually found Google Maps. Let's say a couple years ago, before the tornado. 
or no, after the tornado and there was no tree. And I mean, my staff looked at it years before and there was a tree. And so we fixed those things. I mean, these things are things that uh, council member offices can do. And, you know, I, I think we worked really well with those guys just to get things done right for our constituents. And, you know, certainly, you know, this, this idea that um, people can certainly just, I mean, with, let's say an untrained eye, look at their sidewalks and say that, you know, this is, this doesn't require work. Well, you know, I mean, we have experts who are going to go out there and, you know, do the hard work of looking at every single slats and assessing whether they need work or not. And I, I can appreciate that. And, um, you know, lastly, I mean, I, I want to just point out a little thing about, you know, my sidewalks. I mean, you know, when you look at the new sidewalks that are on uh, my lot, you know, what I see are, you know, little holes. I mean, they look kind of like uh, bullet holes. I mean, like somebody shot into the sidewalks and things like that. And, you know, I mean, those things are things that we can work out uh, with staff, you know, but I, I think for the most part, I, mean, I feel like our staff has worked really hard to make it right for everybody. And I, I want to also say, I mean, you know, the, the first gentleman that came up to speak, uh, I actually personally went out to uh, his his uh, property when there was an issue and it came before the press. Uh, I think KSTP did a story on that. And, you know, I, I felt like our staff um, was on that. Uh, they did everything they could to, you know, uh, make that situation better because um, at, at some point I think a retaining wall fell or something like that. And, you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, our staff was responsive. They did as well as they could. I mean, I think were they perfect? I mean, certainly, I mean, none of this stuff is perfect. We're all human beings, but for the most part, uh, folks worked really hard to get things right. And, you know, in, in a sense, we can't outright just not do this sidewalk program. You know, we actually had a few constituents who um, were, I would say, scheduled, and then the schedule got uh, pushed back.